Okay, we are going to continue along our discussion about nonparametrics, moving into the Wilcoxon signed rank nonparametric analysis. This is the equivalent of a repeated measures t test. So the major focus again is that nonparametrics don't have to meet some of these harder intense ins assumptions. Instead, we can have fewer assumptions like lack of normality, smaller sample sizes, and in the case of today, we're really going to focus on this dependent variable is not going to meet that interval level of measurement. We're going to have an ordinal dependent variable. So as you remember, the t-tests vary on two aspects. Those aspects are whether or not the variable is parametric or non-parametric, us living in non-parametric land, and then whether or not they're repeated measures or independent groups. So for repeated measures, as we'll review on this next slide, um, will be when you test people multiple times or in all conditions. So for here, we're going to work in this lecture on a repeated measures equivalent, which is called the Wilcoxon signed rank test. So focusing down here at the bottom half, repeated measures, subjects are tested repeatedly under all levels of the independent variable, typically pre-test and a post-test, although you could have people in the same or multiple conditions just tested under both. For instance, if you wanted to test their level of satisfaction when drinking Coca-Cola versus Pepsi, not a pre-test versus a post-test, but you'd, you'd have them as their same control. So the example we're going to work off of is the researcher wishes to determine if differences exist in team cohesion at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season for soccer players. So my independent variable is a pretest post test situation. I'm going to use an independent variable of time, where my two levels, because this is still a vari variation of a t-test, will be preseason and postseason. And subjects are tested only under one level of that independent variable. Um, excuse me, they're not tested under only one level, that is a typo. They are tested repeatedly under both levels. Um, dependent variable team cohesion is measured on a one item question, how cohesive is your team? That makes it ordinal level of measurement because it's ranked from one to 10 with no meaningful zero. Um, so we have to go to non-parametrics. The rationale for this design, it's non-parametric because we are, our non-parametric repeated measures t-test, also known as a Wilcoxon sign rank, because only two levels exist, therefore a t-test is appropriate. Participants are tested repeatedly under both levels, both at preseason. Everyone's going to conduct the question or complete the question before the season starts and after the season starts. Therefore, repeated measures t-test is appropriate. And the dependent variable is ordinal. Satisfaction is measured on a 10-point Likert scale with no standardized scale. Therefore, a non-parametric repeated measures Wilcoxon signed rank test is appropriate. My substantive hypothesis here will be that team cohesion is expected to be higher at the end of the season than at the beginning of the season. Statistical hypothesis will be no significant difference will exist in the mean rankings of team cohesion between pre and post season. So you can see that I still have that statistical jargon. Significant and then mean ranking. So we're still going to use mean ranking just like we did for the man Whitney U. And our symbolics look just like they've been looking for all t-tests, where we use mu as our symbol, or symbol. So if we look at the SPSS output, again, you're going to get output here in the positive and the negative ranks. Not super helpful, but that's what's being tested on a z-distribution. So we have a z-distribution works just like the z-distribution we learned earlier this semester, where it has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, um, therefore, anything greater than a standard deviation of 2, plus or minus 2, will be statistically significant because we know that that's going to compromise 5% uh, of our, anything outside of plus or minus 2 will compromise 5% of our distribution, and this middle part of this distribution is 95%. Uh, it helps to get the descriptive statistics so that we can actually interpret the data where we can see that at pre-test, the average score was 5 on that 1 to 10 scale. At post-test, the average score was 6.35. We can see even big increases in the min to the max, um, even though the standard deviations are relatively the same. So that can help us interpret that t-test a little bit better. 
We then write a statement of the finding where soccer players reported significantly higher mean rank team cohesion at the end of the season than at the beginning of the season, and then conclude appropriately without the statistical jargon that soccer players were expected to have a higher level of cohesion at the end of the season than before at the beginning of the season. So that's a pretty quick video, and it's just meant to give you a quick introduction. You don't need to know a ton. Feel confident in that z-distribution and understanding how that works. Re review the notes as necessary and uh, come to class with questions if you need. Thank you.